Today we're going to walk you through setting up Airframe Wireless. When you first open the box, you'll find the wireless phone charger, the 12 volt DC car charger, USB-C cable, and the user manual with the warranty info. Keep this for reference later. First, make sure that your phone is Qi Wireless compatible, like the newer phones from Apple, Samsung, and Google. If you use a case, the back needs to be less than a quarter of an inch thick. Also, if you have a pop socket, eye ring, or magnetic plate on your phone or case, you'll have to remove it or find another spot that doesn't interfere with the charger. Once you're inside the car, locate the round 12 volt DC port and plug in the USB car charger. The blue light on the charger should turn on when it has power. Next, take the cable and plug in the standard USB connector into the green USB port labeled QC 3.0 which stands for Quick Charge 3.0. The wireless charger requires this port to work properly, so don't plug it into the other port or use the built-in USB ports in your car. You can use the other USB port in the charger to power your other accessories or a passenger's phone. Next, take the other end of the cable with the smaller USB-C connector. Locate the USB-C port in the bottom of the wireless charger and plug it in. The blue light on back will light up momentarily and then go out. This is normal. Make sure your vehicle has compatible air vents. The louvers, aka air directors, should be flat and straight. Most vents with circular louvers won't be stable enough to hold the mount. Locate a good spot to attach the mount. If your vent has an adjustment lever in the center, you may want to move it off to one side to make room. If the vent is dusty, clean it first so the mount has a good grip. Firmly squeeze the two buttons on the vent clip and gently place all the way onto the vent louver. Make sure that it's all the way on so that it prevents the vent from tilting down. If you can't fit your hand around the charger to squeeze the buttons, try turning the clip 90 degrees first. If you prefer, you can also plug in the cable after you've attached the mount. Make sure to route the cable so it's out of the way of your dashboard controls or the shift lever. If you plan to run the heater in your car, you'll need to shut off the airflow to that vent to prevent overheating the charger and your phone. If there isn't a shutoff lever for that vent, you'll need to redirect airflow using your car's control panel. Next, attach your phone by opening the spring-loaded grips, which extend out both sides. You can use both hands, or when you get comfortable, you can try it with one hand. The back of your phone should be up against the charging surface. The phone should be centered vertically with the top of the phone grips, and the phone will self-center left to right. When your phone is charging properly, the light in back will stay solid blue. Having your phone too high or too low will prevent it from charging. Your phone should now indicate that it's charging. On iPhones, the battery icon in the upper right will turn green. On Samsung phones, there'll be a splash graphic and a prompt saying it's fast charging wirelessly. While this is a 10 watt wireless charger, iPhones are limited to 7.5 watts of charging and Samsung phones to 9 watts. If the phone is misaligned or if there's a metal object blocking the charging coils, a red light will flash in the back. Remove your phone and remount the phone properly. Once your phone's properly attached, you can angle or rotate your phone to the desired position. Tilting the screen towards you makes it easy for Face ID, plus you don't have to strain to see the screen. To remove your phone, the quickest way is to cradle the bottom of your phone with one hand and push out one of the grips with your thumb. You can also use two hands, holding the phone with one and pushing out the grip with the other. You can expect an iPhone 8 to charge from 0-50% to 50 in roughly 2 hours, and a Samsung Galaxy S8 in about an hour and 20 minutes, but your results may vary. Factors that affect charging speed are heat, apps, broadband LTE use, and screen brightness. If you're running apps that rely heavily on broadband LTE like Waze, Spotify, Pandora, or Apple Music Streaming, expect slower charging speeds. Avoid leaving the charger in direct sunlight or a hot car. Remove it if possible and store in the glove box or center console. One handy tip is that running cool air or the air conditioning to the vent holding the charger will actually improve charging speed. If the temperature inside your car gets above 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, the built-in overheat protection may trigger and shut off the charger for safety. Remove your phone, turn on the air conditioning, and run it for 5-10 to 10 minutes to bring out the temperature inside the car, and then reattach your phone. Please use apps responsibly, and make sure you abide by your local distracted driving laws. We hope you enjoy using Airframe Wireless. For issues or questions, please contact our customer service department.